Okay, we are we are live. We're live. Everybody, welcome. 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 <laughs> We're gonna do it in Japanese. <laughs> Go for it. Naked and famous denim no. Welcome. It's the Naked and Famous Denim live stream. Streaming here, getting a rough start with that yeah. intro. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna practice sorry. that one. Yeah. Uh, it is episode 100. We've made it to a hundred episodes of this live stream since we started. Since we on started YouTube. on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? Uh, now, if we go back to Instagram lives, well, then there's probably a lot, a lot more. But mm -hmm. we're here. We're with all of you, it's really fantastic yeah. to have achieved this monumental achievement of 100 live streams. Mm -hmm. We just, a couple of days ago, passed 11,000 subscribers. So mm -hmm. everything is going up, 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 up. It's fantastic. I can't wait to, uh, I can't, and I'm, I'm, I can't wait to, I don't know, hit a, a million uh, live streams. But I'm happy to be here for number 100. We're, uh, we're back from holiday, so we had a one-week one break from the live stream. Mm -hmm. We're going to answer all your questions live. We're going to talk about raw denim topics. We've got the Kiko denim to show off. If we hit 100 likes, I'm going to show off something from Spring Summer 24, which I definitely mm -hmm. shouldn't be showing off. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do it because I can't hold any secrets back from you guys because you guys are the best live stream audience in the entire universe. I'm going to call it right now. That's it. Right here. This is it. You guys know it. It's official because I said so. And that's that. So let's see where everybody's checking in from. We are streaming live from Yokohama, Japan, the global headquarters hmm. of the live stream. Global live streaming headquarters of Naked that's Famous true. Denim. That is 100% uh, true. When we live stream from elsewhere, it is not the headquarters, but right here is the headquarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's check in with everybody, see where you guys are checking in from today. We've got The Lost Hobbit from New Brunswick, Canada. Welcome, my friend. Uh, I want my muffin. Hey, hello from London, Ontario. Welcome, welcome. I like the names, funny name. Um, Shane, hey from Vancouver, Washington. Great milestone. Thank you so very much. Uh, we've got uh, KMX tuning in from Calgary. Thank you so much. He's wearing his uh, Comfort Monsters. Happy nice. 100th. Thank you very much. BD, Niagara Region, representing Niagara Region in the house. We've got a uh, happy 100 from that blonde dude from Long Island, New York. Uh, James Bundy tuning in. Tuning back in from Soul Hill, UK. <laughs> awesome. Pie from Houston, Texas. We got a lot of people from all over the world. A lot of Canadians in the house as well. Matthew Bradwell, greeting from downtown PDX. Congratulations on the growth. Just switched from the first Kasuri Blues to the Kasuri Ceruleans. Oh, Isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, Patrick Sanchez, watching from Coat Gold Project, Northern Ontario. I have no idea where that is, except for the fact that you said it's in northern Ontario. Mm, hope it, it's probably warm by now. Um, trying to beat my classic slub at work pictures to come. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing those photos. Kevin Somar, NYC. I'll be in New York store for the Kiko denim drop on the 9th. Fantastic. Nice. Couch from Rochester, New York. A lot of New Yorkers in the house as well. Uh, and to you, local New Yorkers, just so you know, the Empire State Selvage has been restocked at our Naked Famous Denim Soho store just recently. So uh, if you're if you're going to be in store, you should definitely check out that pair. Uh, C. Sanchez checking in from Los Angeles, wearing my pickle Ricks. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, Juan Escalante, Harrison, New Jersey, checking in. We've got a, we've got a Jersey boy in the house. And uh, Sergeant Snuggle checking in from Seattle. Gave my rainbow cores the first wash today. Well, be sure mm -hmm. to post some progress photos on that. And we'll we'll share them. You know, speaking of sharing photos, the last week or so, just I've been a little bit, uh, I haven't been as active on the social media as I, as I should oh, have been. So I apologize. Took a vacation. Yeah, I took a vacation. Yeah. Coming back is catching up on a lot of stuff. We're mm -hmm. getting ready. Just some, some, some what's going on at Naked Famous Denim HQ right now. We're getting ready for spring, summer 24. Mm -hmm. So in it's May 
27th right now. Mm-hmm. Our first show is June 23rd in Paris. So less than a month. Less than a month away. We just got the first batch of samples in at Montreal HQ, but there's still a lot of samples to go. So between now, basically within, I'm going to say the next three weeks, because we have to send the sample set to Paris like a week before the show, basically. We have to receive all of our samples, photograph all of our samples, write all the product copy, you know, make the line sheets, make appointments, all their customers. It's it's going to be a pretty hectic three weeks for us. Um, so, uh, anyways, hopefully I can maintain uh, some kind of social media presence uh, with, with photos and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a busy one. Um, our our just our trade show schedule is uh, we're going to be in Paris um, at the end of June. Then Brandon is going to do a small little showroom out of our New York City store in the middle middle late July. Uh, to meet with any customers who want to see us in New York. And then we're going to have a uh, a trade show event in Chicago at a show called Chicago Collective. So while we're in Chicago, it's possible, maybe I should reach out to our, our friend Luke over at Mild Blend. Maybe we could do a, a little meet and greet or something mm-hmm. at the shop. I think that could be kind of cool for our, our Chicago area fans out there. So stay tuned for that. Um, Chicago Collective is the start of August. I don't remember exactly what days they are. But uh, maybe we'll announce a, uh, a meet and greet to see us at Chicago. From um, 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, 8. Okay. Or from 6, 7. I don't know. Something like that. Something like we'll, that. We'll, we'll keep you posted. Arif Jivan, I'll, uh, hopefully I said that right. Uh, I'll see you at Chicago Collective. And Luke is the man. Luke is the man. And yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll be glad to see you out there in Chicago. Um, I would say last time I was in Chicago, I had a really great time. Really, really nice city. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Great food, great architecture, wonderful people. Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, don't believe the hype. Mm. Uh, I, I, I was, uh, you were scared. I was a little scared. <laughs> I, I never, I've never been to Chicago before and I'm like, wow, this place seems crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I've been like briefly back in the days, but mm. I, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I would like to enjoy Chicago. Yeah. America. Anyways, we were just in America. Mm-hmm. Um, so while we were uh, while we were in, uh, while we were away, we were actually in Hawaii. We enjoyed, uh, we enjoyed the, the, are they the 50th state? Mm-hmm. Well, we enjoyed. Is it? 50, yeah. I think, I think so. they're the last yeah. state to join the, yeah, yeah. Join the union. Anyway. Yeah, in Alaska. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. it's the closest state to us. Yeah, the clo- yeah, it's the closest. It takes us only like seven hours to get to America from here, which is pretty cool. Um, actually, although I wonder what it's like. Guam is not that far. I like calling Guam. it Guam, by the way. Um, Guam, it might technically be closer, but it's not the United States. It's a territory. Territory. So yeah, yeah, I don't know how that works. Anyways, one day we'll make Nobody it up knows. to Guam and we'll give you an update. Um, but it's not as good as Hawaii. I see, uh, <laughs> but it's closer. It is close. It is close. I think. Yeah. Not that a seven, a seven, eight, a seven hour flight does not scare me. No. No. But it's also, I think, cheaper. Like, ah, everything right. is cheaper, yeah. I think. Hawaii is a little expensive. Yeah. Um, but it's also very beautiful. So whatever. That's my answer to that. And also, um, I don't understand why all of you Americans don't live in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is paradise. because it's, it's expensive. Yeah, but if you all moved and maybe would all just, you yeah. know, more better economy. I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah, nice. you should all move to Hawaii. It is really unbelievable. Food is great. The weather is great. The, the scenery is great. Mm-hmm. You, you get up in the morning. You go surfing a little bit. And then you go and have some pancakes yeah. and have a nice day. But also, like, everybody who, like, I spoke to, maybe because they're all in, like, the tourist industry, but everybody who I spoke to that lived there were from somewhere else. Like, nobody was from Hawaii. Mm. Did you notice that? Yeah. And it's like, how little, like, do all Hawaiians, like, just move out of the state? Why is it this, you yeah. know, small place filled with... No natives. Yeah, 
But the people that we, we met that moved there, they loved it there. And yeah, anyways. Praise be to Hawaii for being so awesome. Yes. It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, Melanie Murray, hello from Tucson, wearing my Sky High Salvage denim today. Happy 100th episode. Fantastic. Yeah. Sky High. You know, I found a random pair of Sky Highs in our closet. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know we Some had leftover it. Yeah. Samples. Leftover samples. Great jean, by the way. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful tone, that denim. Yeah, and the fact that it's, you know, hemp, it's yeah. just makes it a little bit more summery, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, Austin, checking in from Indonesia, usually not joining live, but here today. Happy 100th episode. FYI, my naked famous jeans are still my favorite jeans to date. Oh, thank thank you. you very much, and thanks for checking in from Indonesia. It's, it's good to see how wide uh, this live stream, how wide this audience can get in this live stream. Um, okay. Uh, Shane, I had a co-worker who is from Hawaii, and she left to Washington. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew a person from Hawaii living in California too. It's like okay, it's the I wrong get... way. <laughs> yeah. gotta... It is the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, what can you do? Veg Tan Journey, good to see you in here. Got to send you pictures of my all natural fourteen ounce cotton patinaed so fast. Got to oh. send you pictures of my all natural, my all natural organic cotton selvage. Yeah. Uh, they patinaed so fast. Yes. Right. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely share that with the community. Mm -hmm. if that gene came out just recently, the uh, yeah, the all-natural. Uh, let's let's take a look here. I uh, just got to pull up the little the little uh, window, the window window. Um, I'm actually wearing all-natural today. Oh, okay. But I have a snowy on my lap. Ah, uh, right. I don't really want to disturb him. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it out there. Yeah. Um, browser window here we go so the all natural organic cotton uh selvage these just came out recently wow the jackets are almost gone mm -hmm. um it is a good jacket very very nice jacket and very easy to pair up with just about anything also very all year we'll, we'll talk about you know the the importance of crew denim in in the wardrobe but uh yeah as far as patinaing goes i mean they're gonna pick up all your stains and the beauty is, is that like it does, it does actually wash off quite easily um, when you wear them. Uh, well, when you wash them. Sorry, Snowy's confusing me. Um, this is Snowy, our cat, and he likes to be right in the middle of the video sometimes. Um, and it's nice for him to join us on our hundredth live stream episode. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, if uh, if you're worried about staining, I would say wash them a little bit more regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want them to patina hard. Uh, maybe go longer between washes. And some of those stains, many of the stains will come out. Some of them will kind of make their way, you know, and then be part of the fabric. They'll embed themselves into that uh, fabric. But they will fade. Well, not so much fade, but they will pick up stains in your life. And they'll, they'll enjoy a different way of evolving. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as Snowy decides he wants to get off my lap, I'll go pull out my raw cotton slubs and give you guys a... Uh, oh, you're going to go grab it? Sure. Okay. It's, it's, it, it should be in the closet there. Um, okay. Um, uh, Pedro, anyone else chat with denim buds and think of great... It's... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little tongue twisted right now. Anyone, anyone else chat with denim buds and think of great questions to ask, but forget them come Friday. This is the boat I'm in right now. Believe me, I forget all kinds of stuff that I plan on talking about during the live streams. Uh, I do tend to write everything down, but sometimes I don't write everything down, and when I don't write something down, I forget it. Uh, do yourself a favor. Get a notebook write everything down i i certainly can't i'm my brain is i have a very short-term uh memory these days i can't remember anything um all right uh but anyways we got a couple i i, I did have a couple of questions pr topics prepared for the live stream today that i think will be fun topics to cover um these are my raw cotton slubs as you can see here um for the most part pretty clean they have been washed recently but people this pretty clean compared to what they were <laughs> but you know certain elements 
I mean, the, the stains have just really embedded themselves in there. But, I mean, I wore these pretty much straight for a year, and they saw maybe three washes total. Um, the last trade show tour I did in, like, January, February, these got really nasty. Like, they were yeah. funky. Um, but, yeah, I think even if we were to wash them a little bit more, or maybe, you know, hand wash them with some scrubbing, like, some of the stains are going to come out. But when you wear them, they to me, they just kind of feel like, you know, worn in painter pants or something like that. Oh, just, yeah. It definitely you know. makes it cool. And there's only, like, one or two stains. That's when, like, you have to kind of power through because it does, like, Yeah, you feel a little self-conscious weird. about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's dirty. But, like, once it gets to, like, an overall, yeah. you know, dirty level, then, then it's, like, a look. Yeah, that's it. It has to get, you know, overall. Yeah. I had a guy message me on IG the other day. He picked up one of our veg tan leather belts, mm -hmm. and he got a water stain on it. And he was a little worried because it was kind of splotchy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, is there anything I can do to get this out? I'm like, there isn't much you can do to get this out, but you just got to power through it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, over yeah. the next you know, a couple of months, this leather is going to get darker, it's going to get browner, you're going to pick up more stains, and eventually it's all just going to blend in together. Mm -hmm. So it's like wearing, I have some veg tan leather shoes, and yeah, there comes a point where like they kind of look kind of like mm -hmm. oddly stained, but when you pick up enough stains and yeah. when the leather starts to change color, then it really starts to pick up. So there is a midpoint mm -hmm. in, that, yeah, in leather. Yeah, like in between or, haircuts. Yeah, like yeah. It just, like, it, or a crew denim where it might feel like, well, these are just dirty. And yeah. then you get yeah. past that. And then yeah. you're glad that you didn't, you know, give up there. Yeah. I did, we did, um, we actually, another Hawaii story, just want to sneak mm. that in. We went to a bee farm in the middle of, like, the mountains in, in Hawaii. And I saw, like, so they had a beehive, and that, that was their thing. But also, like, in the background, they, they had, like, a flower field where I guess, like, it helps with the bee things. Mm -hmm. But they're growing things there, too. And there was, like, a girl who works there who was, like, so cool looking. Yeah. She was wearing, like, all natural colored overalls. Yeah. And her overalls are, like, dirty because she's she's doing field yeah. work and stuff like that. So I thought, I, I saw that. I was like, oh, man, like, maybe I should wear yeah. my natural. Yeah. See the overalls and make it look like that. And when you're gardening, you can, <laughs> uh, you can pick it up. I think it'll look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think it'll look pretty cool. Um, uh... We've got a uh, pending, uh, pending new name, right? I'm a bit bummed the Accru chore sold out in large already. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if na um, or NYC. Naked and Famous Denim NYC. Yeah. We can we can double check for you. Risa's gonna do a little double check there. It's always a good idea that if you don't find something on Tati and Yoko, check out Naked and Famous Denim NYC. And if if all else fails, in fact, the first place you should always check is the blog post on nakedandfamousdenim.com. This is just a little PSA for nakedandfamousdenim.com um, because if you go over to the website, we've got the news section here, so just uh, along the top, and you can see that we have a blog post for every gene that we put out. And if you're looking for something specific, like the all-natural organic, um, we have a listing at the bottom here with all the retailers who carried uh, all the styles now that like if you're looking for the short coat you can see Tatian Yoko has it and they can famous down at NYC maybe not too many um, more yeah there's only uh, medium left I see. on NYC but it, it, I guess it's sold out uh, I guess it, it might be gone mm -hmm. um, but only medium in Yoko. The, the, the other thing to do is when something is sold out or is uh, perceived to be sold out go on Tatian Yoko or Naked Famous Denim NYC.com, click on the item that you're looking for. And if it's sold out in the size that you're after, you'll see this email when available. Just fill out that information here and we'll send you an email if and when that size does get restocked. So sometimes we might find some extra units in the warehouse um, or maybe there's a return or something like that. Anyways, this is gonna assure that you, that you do get that notification. And also, maybe double check those measurements. Um, I did, you know what? I know that my sample of this jacket ran a little bit large. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the production is, but double check those measurements. Maybe that medium might actually end up working for you. So uh, just just give that one uh, a double check. But 
uh, yeah, there you have it. Definitely take advantage of that email when available uh, part. You would be surprised how many things come back in stock after a while. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Mike Knight writes uh, regarding a cruise and, and denims and things like that. Uh, kind of like all white slip-on vans. After a while, you don't care about the dirt. Yeah. There's something about a nice worn-in pair of sneakers. I used to really despise like the new fresh look of a sneaker and i really wanted yeah. my sneakers to be worn in yes 100%. um and like getting a new pair of shoes felt like i don't know yeah it's it's like yeah it, it is just like or oh, something you have to do with yeah maybe some people do feel like that um when like jeans are raw and that's why distressed pre-distressed jeans are so popular because they just don't want to wear a crisp new pair right um, I have a, hold on, I got to find something because I do write everything down. And if I don't, oh man, maybe I forgot. Uh, I didn't write that down. Uh, BD asked, Bayz had any updates from the fading twins? Um, so if you remember a while back, uh, I sent out a pair, uh, to, uh, uh, some, some of our, uh, viewers here, um, twin brothers. And we wanted to compare the fading differences between a left-hand twill. Uh, so we had the left-hand twill denim, and then we had the offshoot broken twill selvage, which was made with the exact same yarn as the left-hand twill selvage, but made in a broken twill construction. And we wanted to compare the fading differences of just construction. And since they were identical twins and actually happened to live similar lifestyles, it was um, good a, a good experiment. Yeah. Um, they haven't posted that much on IG. I unfortunately right now don't remember their um, Instagram handle. Their Instagram handle, um, but they posted one an update recently. I will. Uh, I'll see if I can find that information. Maybe we'll we'll look at it next week. Uh, but eventually, once you know they they faded them enough, I'm gonna get them back from them, and then we'll we'll have them, and then we can take some nice photos and. Um, you know, have some really beautiful examples <coughs> showing the difference there. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, da, 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 da. uh, Venomous Teddy says, nice mug, Risa. Yes. Yeah, we got, uh, the Naked Famous Denim milk glass stackable mugs right here, available on tateandyoko.com. Yeah, these are sold out, but we are restocking them pretty soon. Um... Not well, like next week, but yeah. um, in a in, few in the weeks. fall, yeah. Uh, and then we'll also have the new color. Yeah. Yeah. Did we show that off already? Once I before, think we did. Yeah. but uh, but yeah. Um, M. Eve writes, "Congratulations on the hundredth episode. Any new denim to show us? I really need those JoJo jeans. If we get to a hundred likes on this live during the live, I'm going to show you the new." Very, very new, uh, Mij fourteen. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. Spring summer twenty four. We haven't released Mij twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I'm just. But we're showing. I'm just teasing everything. Not even this a tease. Is... It's a full reveal. <laughs> <laughs> but we gotta get. Oh, BD with the with the answer. It's uh, at twin fades. Let me just oh. pull it up and see what we've got here. Um, a good name that's a good handle um i don't know how many uh comparison shots we have here though uh anyways it's still uh it still looks pretty fresh but yeah yeah um we're gonna have to uh there we go there's, there's the left hand twill yeah i mean it's showing some fades yeah uh yeah, I don't. I don't. I have, we have to wait for the broken twill update to come. But the left hand twills are fading in quite nicely, um, and uh, you can see here these are the brothers. Uh, and yeah, we, I think this is a great, great, great experiment. Here. Yeah. So um, it's the first ever identical twin fading experiment. It's very true. Uh, I don't think this has ever been done before. And uh, side by side image of the two fabrics. Cool. So, anyways, we gotta we gotta wait to see some more updates from that uh, broken twill option uh, here. This one came yeah. in eighteen weeks ago. Uh -huh. This one was a week ago. So, uh -huh. uh, I mean, 
for a couple months back, you can see yeah. a little bit of stuff starting off over here. But uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stay tuned. But yeah, mm -hmm. follow uh, Twin Fades if you want to keep up to date with these uh, jeans and uh, maybe commenting and stuff will uh, maybe help encourage them. Uh, but yeah, you, either way, I know creating content, creating posts is uh, it's not that easy, right? Mm. You know, it does actually take a lot of time. And uh, so, you know, no, no pressure. But when they are done, we'll, we'll get them back from them and um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, document them nicely. Speaking of documenting things nicely, I wanted to, I know that we've been getting a lot of newer uh, folks entering the chat, mm. coming into raw denim. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of books that I think might be interesting to new people getting into raw jeans. So uh, I have a couple here. If you've been a, a follower of the live stream, then you've probably seen some of these before. But I just wanted to show some of these off because uh, I think people will get a, a big kick out of them. And uh, the first one I would recommend is this one. It's called the 501 XX Collection. Um, this is a beautiful book just filled with great photography of faded vintage uh, Levi's jeans. And uh, this was, a free, it's a Japanese company that did this book, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there's a lot of documentation in here. It's in both English and Japanese. So you've got Japanese and the English, but just beautiful photos of faded worn in pairs with the hardware. And you can really see the evolution of, uh, you know, how jeans came to be, you know, with, with, you know, buckle backs. And I think they even have, uh, jeans with single pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like really old jeans. Uh, single pocket options here. You know, the other day, just as I'm going to go on a side rant, um, it was a, a comment and so I think, no, I'm trying to remember it exactly, but I think it, again, it was a stretch related comment mm. and something about how like it's not authentic and, mm. and I really hate that idea. And, to me, it's like, you know, if you think that, you know, these these changes in denim make or in jeans make them any less authentic, then, I mean, are we to only expect to wear like if, if anything deviates from a single pocket with the buckle back? Are they not? Is that not authentic anymore? Like at some point, somebody was like, you know what? We should put belt loops on these jeans. Mm -hmm. Right. And. You know, not. Uh, I wonder if there was a, a raw denim enthusiast uh, person back then, would they have been like, no, belt loops? That's just unacceptable. No, you have to wear overalls. You have to have a cinch back. And if you don't have these things, they're not jeans. These are, you know, like, I wonder. I don't think there was that type of cynic back then because there was. I don't think this. People thought of well, jeans this in this wasn't way. Well, like a fashionable yeah, item. Right. This was just utility yeah. pants. But uh, it does it does always strike me when when that right. like that comment comes out. And I'm like, yeah, like when did you decide that this like, this specific like thing? This is iteration authentic? was yeah. the jeans. Like yeah. when it went from like you know uh, like pleated front jackets with the flat pockets yeah. to you know the current like trucker style jacket, yeah. where you're like, no, no, no. no. Like, right. no, but like, but, but I think it's, it's in response to the fact that like all of the, mo most of the denim jackets are settled as like the, the trucker, trucker style. style. Yeah. And so like, no, 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 this is not acceptable because everybody wears this now. Yeah. And we have to go back in time and just look at the past because, but, but in that sense, then like, why is type two accepted? Even though type one is the original, right? Like, yeah. Speaking of which, we do yeah. have the yeah. uh, jacket the, version the companion, of the same, uh, yeah. uh, so, same series. So the people who made this book, uh, and this is really just covering jeans. I did I pull it the same page again? Um, this one goes through denim jackets and the evolutions of denim jackets. Uh, so a very very interesting book, a great companion. 
uh, to have right, something that flow. even if you're not into raw jeans, uh, it's just a, a nice book to even own and have on the coffee table. I'm sure if you know company came over and looked through it, they would be fascinated by pictures of these old garments and how they evolved. And uh, yeah. yeah, my aim with a lot of our photography is to try and document as much of our you know new products as possible. But I want to start archiving and taking more and more photos of our, um, you know, existing faded jeans that we have. So, uh, yeah, at some point, I would really like to make a book like this with a history of naked and famous denim and, you know, beautiful photos of faded jeans. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, that, that's the dream. Um, this old school blanket line. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And then these old tags. And you can see the evolution of, like, paper patches and leather patches and things like that. So um, it's really neat to look at these things because you can also get an idea of how things are going to evolve. And I think it's always just a great way to, to you know, enjoy our past. One thing that's neat, in, in some of these, they have, like, you know, old price lists. Um, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. here's... I don't know if I ever told this story before, but... One time we had a customer, here, here's a price list, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you can show that one. Uh, like, you know, this is, I guess, what their, their wholesale prices were back in the day. Um, how much does a, a jacket cost? Let's see. Um, a pair of jeans? Cost per unit, $2.81. $2 All Close right. per dozen. $33.72. Yeah. And Wait, I get this is. Sorry. And you know what's interesting? This is not jackets. Approximate weight per dozen, 20 pounds, so that you yeah. would understand how much it would cost to ship them. I guess if you had to arrange the shipping. Um, Per D. I don't know. Per dozen? Um, yeah. yeah, the jacket, sorry, that was jeans. The jacket was $3.25 per unit, $39 per dozen. 39 per dozen. It's a good deal. We should like we should wholesale go. in dozens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay. So, anyway, speak, going back to priceless, we had a customer once who was um, they couldn't pay their bill. Mm -hmm. and oh, just just FYI, this yeah. was from November nineteen fifty eight. Mm -hmm. This priceless. So it's well past the war times. Yeah. It's pretty recent in terms yeah. of nineteen fifty eight. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, I don't know what the minimum wage was back then, but uh, yeah, and these are probably yeah. I, I wonder if the California. if the uh, the ratio is equivalent, like yeah, yeah. I really wonder, like you know, compared to what a a jean jacket co costs to make today, and what the average worker makes per hour. Like, do you get the same quality of product for? the price mm -hmm. well quality is hard to compare but like i would like to know what the like you know like three dollars uh t back then is how much today like yeah. it's, it can't be like more than i don't know yeah i i think we're getting ripped off today compared <laughs> um, well it's it's different times right people yeah. were working yeah differently back then sure so. anyways um Okay, so anyways, back to my little rant story that is going off in a lot of different directions here. But a customer couldn't pay their bill and for some reason thought it was okay to pay their bill with a, I think it was from like 1907, something like that, Re Levi's Receipt. It might have not been 1907. I, I don't know why that number came into my head. But a very, 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 very old receipt from a, like a purchase order with, like it had a Le Levi's, you know, uh, writing at the top. It was handwritten. And I remember getting it, like I got this package in the mail and I said, oh, you know, I can't pay my bill. Hopefully this will, you know, even things out. This is from my private collection. Mm -hmm. And it came in like two pieces of cardboard and like the paper was so delicate that it instantly tore apart. And I'm like, uh-oh. Um, and then I put it back into the cardboard and I put it in a filing cabinet and I haven't been able to find it till this day. I do, I have an idea of where it might be, but I am also afraid that it might have been thrown out at some point. Possible. Um, but yeah, 
but yeah, it's uh, I if I find it, mm-hmm. I will I will get it framed and everything. But I have I have a strong feeling that I've definitely lost it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, we did not accept it as payment. Right. Yeah. Um, a payment. It wasn't a payment. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Appreciate it. Appreciate the thought. Appreciate the gesture also. But uh, the bank wouldn't take it. Ooh. Wait. No. Wait. Sorry. Um, uh, I also noticed that this uh, market oh, line yeah. page has the tag for the lining. Yeah. It's 60% reused wool. All right. And 25% what percent cotton? 28% 20, cotton and 12%, 12% rayon. rayon. All right. So back then already, it, although it's not, it doesn't look that old, but um, yeah, they were using reused wool. Yeah, and rayon. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Um, there are, uh, Brainstar writes, there are 91 people watching and only 57 likes. If you haven't liked, please do give a thumbs up so we can get some secret previews. <sighs> this is true. If you're watching right now, you haven't hit that like button. Hit that like button. We got to get to 100 likes during the stream, and we're gonna preview Mij 14. And mm-hmm. if we don't preview it today, we will eventually get to preview it, but it may not be today. But I definitely want to do it during the 100 live stream, so we got to get 100 likes. So hit the like button right now. Tell a friend. Log into your other account. Just hit the like button. <laughs> um, whatever it takes. Let's get up to 100, everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian writes about the the cost of three dollars. Whatever. It's about thirty four dollars in today's money. I mean, to be fair, this was a price list for stores. It wasn't yes, for right. So if you double, consumers. yeah, that's true. Uh, if but, you double it, yeah, yeah, it's still, it's still. I mean, you know, made in China, like uh, more of like. I suppose a made in China jacket would still come out to about that cost today. Yeah. So maybe it hasn't. It makes sense because, I mean, obviously things are more expensive to make in America, partially because, you know, the economy is different, but also because we don't have the, the. the manufacturing yeah setup. so it's more yeah. rare yeah. where things are you know more expensive yeah yeah so um okay quite interesting so it, the price maybe hasn't changed all that much for made in usa yes just as you said because of the 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 way that you know productions and things like that have changed throughout time but uh if you consider similar economies mm-hmm. then maybe the price hasn't changed that much uh all right well there you have it Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, let's talk about another book. This one's the book I got most recently, and I think is um, one of the coolest books out there. This is a book called The Rebel's Wardrobe, and it is not just denim related, but all things, you know, heritage, menswear, all the stuff that we like. Um, and it just goes through all the different eras, all the different key essential items that, you know, define our, you know, rugged men's style. You know, everything from workwear. Um, and it even goes into like hip hop and like streetwear stuff near the end. So it is quite, um, you know, and leather jackets and, and things like that. Uh, it is quite robust and the photography is beautiful. It has all the iconic photos you can you can ever want to see. Um, you know, here's, here's the Ramones, for example. And so, yeah, everything that, uh, you know, it's not just like sartorial. It's it's definitely just an evolution of, you know, this rugged style, leather, boots, workwear, all that good stuff. And so, you know, if you want a great place to look at it all, you know, here's a great photo of Elvis, for example, in the, uh, the fisherman sweater. Uh, if you want a comprehensive guide to all good things menswear, this is definitely the book to get. It came out most recently, and uh, it was done by the folks. It was done by um, uh, the folks over at the Indigo Invitational. Uh, they actually put this one together. Um, I just want to make sure I'm. Oh man. Yeah, it's not on the front. I just want to... I should have been more prepared for this one. Um, So, uh, Thomas uh, from Denim Hunters and uh, Brian Zaboa. I I definitely... I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he's... uh, Brian is the guy behind Indigo Invitational. Tomas 
he's uh, he has a website called Denim Hunters. He did another book. I forget which book it was, but he's he's mm-hmm. like a, yeah, similar. Yeah, he's a he's a knowledge base for this type of thing, and uh, he's really really uh, a great guy. And you know, obviously, they put together another fantastic, fantastic book. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, get it. Obviously, it looks cool. It's gonna sit great on your coffee table, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's very inspirational. Yeah. So if you're in, if you're new to the world of heritage workwear and raw denim, and you're you're just getting into it, you want to learn more. These are some really really good options for you. This last one, the Rebels wardrobe, I think will give you a beautiful overview of everything. And then if you want to drill down into specifics, like you know pictures of faded jeans, then yeah. uh, you get into those Levi's, uh, those Levi's books. So uh, it really puts a lot of things into perspective. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. So, there you have it. If uh, if there are any other, I know that you know every now and then people ask me for book recommendations. Those those are some of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I do have a lot. Now, like over the years, I've I've, I've collected quite a lot. So, uh, if you have any recommendations for books that you might enjoy uh, that you think the community here will like, then then shut them out and we'll mm-hmm. we'll check them out. If we don't own them, we'll get them and we'll show them off. So there. Uh, Marty, uh, Pape writes, my uh, uh, Japan Heritage jeans arrived today. I can't wait to get them tailored and start wearing them. I'm looking forward to the lightweight feel, uh, uh, the lightweight feel for the Arizona summer. My Heritage, sorry, you wrote, you wrote my Heritage jeans arrived today. I assume Japan Heritage, but mm, is there another? It's, but it's not so lightweight. That's not so lightweight. But you could certainly enjoy them if, uh, no matter what. Uh, but maybe uh, clarify that one for me. Um, okay. Uh, um, uh, Riley O'Brien writes, In your guys' experience, are denim jackets able to be altered? What parts of the denim jacket can be easily tailored? And what are more difficult? What are the more difficult aspects of it? Um, so... The o- if you want a vest, you just cut off the arms, <laughs> yeah. and then you've got yourself a denim vest. That's the easiest uh, alteration. Um, but um, the I think it depends on the construction. A lot of the denim jackets are made with flat felt seams all over. So when it's like a flat felt seams, it's not easily alterable. Um, yeah. So so that that's the difficulty. Um, in terms of so if your seam construction is like this, yeah, and you can see it's folded in on itself, you know, there's no frayed edges, there's no, there's no like surging done. Yeah, this is basically taking the fabric and sandwiching it together like this, yeah. and then stitching along the top. So this is the same reason why it's difficult to hem, sorry, difficult to taper some jeans from the inseam, because oftentimes yeah. you have a felled seam on the inseam. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> this is the inseam where it's, okay, it's hard to see. On a black denim. <laughs> this one, this one it's, I can show it, right? Uh, yeah, we've shown this one right. before. So, like this is the flat felt inseam, and so this one's hard because when you open it up, it's not flat, whereas this one yeah. is just, Two pieces of um, fabric, fabric, and they're sewn. Yeah, sewn together like that, and here, and then. So opening open. this is a lot easier because yeah. what you have to do is just open up that seam, and you're and not then gradually like you know taper or, or yeah. cha- change like you know where you sew, and then it changes the fit. Whereas felt seam is like you can't just stop at some point and then change the direction. Yeah. It's just gonna it, it's not gonna fall properly yeah. you'd have to so, open up the entire felt seam alter it and then do a different finish on the inseam yeah which is doable yeah a lot of people I mean, aren't gonna want to do that because a lot more work um it will cost more yeah and with the denim jackets i think most of them are felt seams yeah so it's hard to change the body of the the denim jacket. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is that like you can <clears throat> you can it, it's, you it's can hard act- to change the the sleeve even um, Yeah. And because- here here's why. It is 
if you want to change the sleeve length, you open up this seam here, and then you cut this, and then you can sew it back. But the oftentimes is this, this opening here, you're not going to be able to move that, right? So if you do alter the length of the sleeve on a denim jacket, this opening here just gets a little bit shorter, which may or may not be an issue, but that's really the only thing you can do here in terms of shortening the sleeve. So you have a little bit of leeway, but this opening here, it doesn't get, it's not really going to get any wider. I mean, yeah, it's because it's felled and yeah, I mean, it would, it would take some work, but if you're, if you're taking off an inch, it's probably not a problem. Um, I mean, you could take it all the way down probably if you need it. I don't it. know if you can put your hand through that. Yeah, right. It'll, I'm it'll, sure. it'll make it difficult. You need yeah. that opening so that you can get your hand and through. And you can definitely not roll your sleeves at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I mean, it's, uh, it's something that uh, a tailor can tell you, um, what's possible and what's not. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's not as many options on a denim jacket to alter than, uh, than on a pair of jeans, maybe. I mean, if you wanted to expand it, make it a little bit wider, I suppose what they would do is open up one of these seams, put a piece of fabric in there. But then it's not going to be the same fabric. Yeah, it's it'll be a different weird. fabric. It'll look yeah. a little weird. No, it, it can't be yeah. properly altered. Yeah. Um, so... The answer is not too many options. Denim vest is probably the easiest thing to do in that respect. Um, we've got a, a customer. I can't read that because it's in Korean, but a Korean customer or a Korean fan out here. Do you guys have a lot of customers in Korea ever done a pop-up store in Seoul? Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a, quite a good fan base in Korea. Uh, we have a, a very strong retail partner out there called Mode Man, and uh, we've done... It's been a while, but we actually have done a few pop-up events in Seoul uh, in the past. Uh, it's just, it's been a while since we've been out there. I'd love to get out there again. Uh, I've always had a good time. For At one point, Korea was somewhere we would visit usually like once a year. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, done, we've done a few events out there, but it, it has been a while. And if we do do it again, it will certainly be in collaboration with our, our good friend uh, at Mode Man in we Korea. We should. We're so close now. Yeah. Now it's a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Venom Seti says, Annyeonghaseyo. And Annyeonghaseyo to all of our Korean friends out there. Um, Venom Seti writes, Any chance of a brown, brown, groovy guy ever getting made? Um, any chance? There's definitely a chance. It's not a 0% chance. Yeah. Um, Ooh, sorry. Um, the, yeah. I see where you're going with that but I, I feel like maybe it's just kind of a little bit of a trendy thing and we don't tend to do so much so well with those yeah. kind of vibes so we'll see we'll see yeah, yeah. um uh uh da, 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 da. okay uh pirates any plans for green selvage jeans well all green we've done before. I actually wouldn't mind doing it again. We do have like a herring, uh, like a herringbone twill, like an army That's style like, yeah. uh, fabric coming out in the fall, which will... Uh, like similar to this kind of color. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So we do have that Light coming green. out. We've yeah. got green cast <laughs> options coming out this fall in both the um, Naked and Famous Denim Made in Canada and MIJ collections. This is the MIJ 12 Al Midori Selvage. It's a green cast denim, so it's a little bit of green dye added to the indigo here to give it a, a little bit of a greenish look. It may be a little bit difficult to see right here, but if you compare it to like a more standard indigo denim, you can see that it's a lot greener. See a lot more red yeah. in here, yeah. a lot more green in here. Yeah, these two are actually really good examples of like red cast mm -hmm. and green cast denim because like you can tell that this is a lot more warmer tone and you can really see the green in this one here when you compare them. On its own, it's certainly not so easy to see, but when compared... Especially on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then we also have a reissue of the MIJ... Four. Three? Three? Four? Five? Three. I think the MIJ three. Maybe three. Uh, MIJ three, uh, the, the original green cast denim, that is coming in the mainline Naked and Famous Made in Canada collection for the fall. Also, that one's going to be a limited one. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike the original MIJ3, it's going to be a samphorized denim. So it's not going to be like an unsamphorized tempe treated sort of deal. 
But uh, but we have that option here. Yeah, so yeah. So if you're looking no for that, reason to have yeah. both. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of green toned yeah. options it's coming funny for the fall. We're just like saying, oh, we haven't done green cast in like years. Yeah. And then now we have two. Yeah, we've got two. <laughs> we've, got, we've got options. Uh, also, just a reminder for anybody tuning into the live stream right now, we've got 104 viewers. If you haven't hit that like button, hit it right now. Once we hit 100 likes on the live stream during the live, I'm going to preview MIJ14 from the Spring Summer 24 collection because we literally just got the sample. Brandon hasn't even seen this one yet. And uh, we're going to show it off to you guys first because I love you all so very much. And but it's we, the perks of watching live streams. Yeah, and the perks of being on the 100th edition of the live stream. So 100 yeah. likes for the 100th edition to see MIJ14. Let's do it. Let's get there. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Um, okay, Pedro writes, uh, has Naked Famous ever done a double front jean? No. What's a like jean? a like a carpenter kind of pant jean? Oh, like yeah. layered, double yeah. layered. Yeah. Um, no. No. I don't think we will. Honestly. I don't. Yeah. I'm really not. Like, I get it that there is a demand for it in a. It's definitely the streetwear, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Carhartt Dickies streetwear kind of guy who's looking for that. Um, I just don't. I just. To me, it seems a little too trendy, uh, and I don't like to dive into trend too much. And We're all about fabrics, yeah. and I think it might interfere with the message. Yeah. I'm not opposed to it completely. I just, you know, I don't know. It's, it's not for me, um, and I think the guys who are buying that stuff are probably buying it from, like, the workwear companies that are making it for, you know, a very, very good price, whereas our price is going to be expensive. It will be expensive. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure that, uh, I'm not sure that it's a big enough market for us to want to go down that path. Yeah. Double front 40 ounce. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that'll be like a, f you cannot yeah. bend your knees. Yeah, no, that, I don't that'll think be that, terrible yeah. to wear. Um, uh, Aiden Smith, would you guys ever make some shorts? It's hot out here in Florida. Okay, oh. if you don't know already about our, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to amaze and impress you right now. Uh, if you haven't seen this video posted by Tate and Yoko, then prepare because it's gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna have a great time right now. So we're going over to the Tate and Yoko Instagram, and here's the message that. Uh, you all need to know about short season has started turn any pair of pants any jeans into shorts at Tate and Yoko all you need to do is request your inseam at checkout just like you would for hemming and we will turn anything pants related into shorts so whatever inseam you want you can have it and you can look as handsome as these two right here we've got Terry and Garrett just really showing off the 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 flexibility of this style. They're beautiful legs. Yeah. Um, I have to say they did an incredible job with this yeah. video. It's really, really great. It's funny. And uh, they look really cool. Uh, they really, like, I love it. I, yeah. I laughed so hard when I saw this. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll turn any pair of jeans, any trouser that we sell into shorts. Just let us know what inseam you want, and we'll we'll make it happen. So Yeah, uh, but but... On top of that, we also have some shorts coming. Yes, we do have some shorts coming. Like shorts that are that are only made in shorts yes. uh, coming. And some cool fabrics, actually. Yeah. And we will get to those those shorts in just a minute because we just hit 105 likes, oh. which means... We got to show off. We got to show off some product here. So uh, I'm going to hang this up. Okay. Um, and we've got the jean right there. All right. <sighs> So, MIJ 14, 14, Spring Summer 2023 collection. I would like to point out that this is the f maybe the first time we're introducing MIJ products as a spring summer yes. product. Because we tend to, like, in the past, we were only doing, like, one a year. Yeah. And that tend to fall in the fall. Yeah. Because, you know, fall is a better denim season. But this is the first ever lighter weight yeah. spring summer. Yeah. MIJ. A true spring-summer fabric in the MIJ series. 
Uh, weight wise, what are, what are we at with this one? Oh, I, I, have, I have to I double check. I think check. they're like nine and a half ounces. Um, but let's uh, let's just take a close look at this fabric first. So this beautiful like pale indigo tone, which is just incredibly neppy, and it has a great slub texture to it as well. Even in this lightweight form, you can see those beige neps throughout the fabric. The real look at that, look at that fabric, incredible. And uh, the real winner, the real specialty, is when you take a look on the inside here because also I have to get them to uh, narrow in that uh, inseam here. The sample came out maybe a little wrong. Um, sorry, narrow out that. Uh, usually on the MIJs we have a, a, a smaller selvage uh, uh, tolerance here. So I just this, this is the first sample. It just came in, so I've got to get that corrected. But take a look at the fabric from the inside. So you've got that nice warm beige tone. You've got like indigo neps. You've got white beige neps. It's just a beautiful amalgamation of details here. And of course, it's this lightweight, crunchy fabric. It's unsamphorized, tempi treated, and you've got that beautiful hairiness. You've got so much character in this fabric, and it makes just a beautiful, beautiful lightweight denim option. Um, we've got that sheepskin leather patch here on the back. All the details that you can. Uh, you know, come to expect from the MIJs. These are... Uh, I can't find the weight. Oh, you can't find the weight. But yeah, yeah but it, it, it is around maybe 10. Around 10 ounces. Yeah. So uh, it's rigid, but not particularly rigid. Like you can see here, like it, it still holds its shape quite well, but yeah. I mean, they're just going to break in really easy. It's hard to really explain to you how hairy this fabric is mm -hmm. because it's really hairy. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll once we get like some better photos, and obviously we're just streaming here, so you can't see it. It's not going to pick up on the camera, but unbelievably hairy. Yeah, and neppy. I really like that the nep is like brown and you know like a beige color, yeah. where it was like a lot majority of nep you know, denim that I've seen had white nips, which is cool. Yeah. But this one's just a little bit more subtle, a little bit more like hearty. Yeah. It's, it's a it's, nice. it has a very old school look to it. Yeah. Like, you know, uh very very, very vintage. So um I'm very excited for this one. Uh, I don't have a name for it yet. It's just MIJ14. We'll come up with a, uh, a name for it. <laughs> I, at, at some point, I'm going to get rid of the, the numbering scheme also. Um, just because it's, it's, you know, even Apple got rid of the number. No, no, they didn't. They're on oh, iPhone, yeah. like 15 yeah. or whatever. I mean, it's yeah. kind of a good way to kind of keep track. Yeah. But, but at, at some point I forget, like what's six, what's seven, like, right, right, like right. a yeah. name helps me. Oh, hundred percent. We need a name yeah. at this point, but uh, it could be the MIJ 12, the whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, James Jones writes, will it come in the true guy fit? This is in fact the true guy right here. So yes, it is coming in the true guy fit. MIJ jeans starting this fall will all come in the true guy fit. Super weird, easy, true, true. guy. Yeah. And denim jacket wise, we, we got the, the regular trucker style type three. And we also have the heritage denim jacket, which is type two inspired. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. So actually, like MIJ series will come in more fits than mainline naked and famous denim because you don't see this yeah. jacket in yeah. mainline. This will only be available in the MIJ series. This is the MIJ 14 in the heritage jacket. And you can see shorter on the body, you know, it, it, bl it blooms out a little bit in the back here. Um, so even if it fits a little bit smaller, it actually moves with you. Um, typically with something like this, you know, you're going to want to wear it to the waist. So maybe something tucked in, uh, is the way to go. Um, so styling it like that. And, uh, the sample, because it's on Sam Fry's, the, uh, the length isn't the right length. Anyways, that'll get fixed for the production. But, um, you can see here, that's, uh, that's the styling of it. Wear it in your regular size. It's going to be a little bit more fitted. If you size, like, it's kind of. This style is meant to kind of fit a little bit more like a shirt. Um, so you can see if you want to wear it very heritage style, you wear it in your correct size. Like this is a medium. I could wear the medium if I want to just style it like this. If I wanted to wear it a little bit bigger and layer it up or something, I would maybe go one size up, 
get a large or even an XL if I want to be able to like put a, you know, a lot but underneath think, it. But I think this kind of like compact shorter fit goes really well with like a wider fitting jeans. Like if yeah. you are into more, you know, true guy or easy guy kind of um, looser fit of jeans, I think this might look better with that. Yeah, it really looks very uniform um, when you've got it like f a little bit more fitted. Um, but yeah. This is a size medium. I typically wear size mediums. Like, I'll, I'll put on the, the trucker jacket so you get an idea of, like, the fit difference. But uh, that's it right here. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it goes to the waist. It's not, it's not a long jacket. And you can see how it kind of billows out in the back because there's some back pleating here. Yeah. And, uh, so even if it, like, kind of feels small, like, when you move, it, it, it moves with you. Like, the pleats open up. So that's, that's kind of the idea there. Maybe so, try on in type three to yeah. see the difference. You can try that on. And then this is the, the trucker style. And you'll see here, longer in the body, more room in the chest, but it doesn't like billow out the same way that, that uh, the heritage jacket does, so. Yeah. I, I find like type two style jacket fit like more unisex y. Yeah. Because it's, you know, shorter, doesn't go all the way down here. Yeah. I mean. And I also have the side pockets on the trucker jacket, whereas yeah. you don't have the side pockets on the, uh, the heritage jacket. So, yeah. There you have it, folks. Two jacket options, four jean options. The MIJ series is firing up. Mm -hmm. um, firing up on all cylinders. I'm, I'm really going to expand a lot more options here. Um, you know, we have, the, we have the Made in Canada collection, and then we will have uh, a deeper MIJ collection. Mm -hmm. um, more options. Just, I really want to, I really want to make some incredible things. You know, with mainline, there's no question that we can we can do a lot, but we want to work. There's a price point, right? Mm -hmm. There's a price point we want to stay in. Mm -hmm. With MIJ, price point is I don't I don't care. Mm -hmm. it, this is all about yeah. just we it, if it costs what it costs. That's that really yeah. what it boils down to. Like if mm -hmm. if we want to make a very very beautiful fabric, and it's expensive to make, it's it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, I think you know as a as an appreciator of denim, you'll understand it when you see it. Um, and we we will deliver, even within that price, I mean, we're still going to, you're not buying it from, you know, some mm -hmm. giant company who's going to mega inflate the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still buying it from a small company who, who's, you know, we're not, we're not uh, you know, we don't have designer brand margins that, uh, that we're kind of shoving down your throat. Like... To be fair, I mean, you know, what we charge, even in MIJ, you go buy, like, designer jeans, you will not even get close to the value mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, like, what actually goes into making those jeans. So I still think we, we've got a value proposition there. But, uh, but yeah, it will, it will expand. Yeah. And, like... And it's just, like, <clears throat> it's, it's a different kind, right? Like, so, it's, you know, like, a, a basic, clean you know, rigid pair of jeans can go a long way, but this is for like extra. So we, yeah. we were very like selective when it comes to um, fabrics. We were just like, it has to be like another level. It has to be something extremely beautiful yes. and unique to for us to um, make it into Japan, uh, made in Japan collection. And that's, that's kind of why we've been only running one a year. Um, uh, more or less because you know it's just like these these fabrics don't you know they don't grow on trees so yeah. we just kind of have to uh, take the time to develop it and you know find the right suppliers and stuff like that but um uh it's 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 great that we're slowly expanding with yeah. putting more effort into it and i think you know it's it's still going to be a smaller collection yeah. but more people can appreciate that yeah um, so yeah, um, uh, the Raven, have you guys ever thought of making selvage work pants? Mm. Uh, what do you mean by work pants? 
we have work pants. Oh, fit. right, the work exactly. pant fit. Um, yeah. That's not a bad idea. It is not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as far as I've ever thought about I, making I do them. like that fit, and I think that fit is a little bit more... Um, more approachable now mm -hmm. that like the wider legs, trailer legs right. are uh, more common. So I guess in terms of if we've ever thought about it, we're thinking about it right now. Why are you out of focus? Why am I out of focus? Uh, there we go. Oh, there go. Camera. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay. Uh, Tova Cobra, any update on the Dia de los Muertos jeans? Uh, it's no update on it. We have we actually have to pursue it. Like one thing that we we. Sourcing the cotton was doable. Uh, we actually just have to uh, drill down the selvage ID uh, because we want to get it like Mexican blanket colors. We'll uh, but we haven't done that yet. And okay. uh, it's just, it's on the... It's not, in the works. It's in the works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on, it's, yeah, we got, we all, I wish I, we had more arms so we can just do so many more. I want to be an octopus. Arms? Yeah. Yeah, you oh, can do brain. so many different... And brains. Yes. Yeah. I got to... Octopuses have more than one brain, right? Sure. Sure. Yes. Eight brains. They got more feet. They got more brains. They can just multitask, like, incredibly. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, no mega update on that one. But it, it has not been forgotten. It is it is in the, uh, in the realm of things that need to be done. Um, okay. Um, C. Sanchez writes... You've mentioned that fox fiber cotton gets darker the more you wash it. Is it possible to have a fox fiber warp? Could it work like a uh, color core, but where the core actually gets darker over time? Um, well, okay, so the change in fox fiber colors is not like fading, like indigo fading. It is way more subtle. It is just like a natural thing that happens. So natural color, you know, just like anything in nature, like things. Just like a leather. Kind of, yeah. I would I would compare it more to like a, le a leather patinaing because mm -hmm. it just kind of gets darker on its own over time. It doesn't fade like fade even, lines or fade wear patterns. Yeah. And it's even less dramatic than yeah. leather pa patinaing. But um, yeah. So like in that sense, like it wouldn't work like colored core. Or like any kind of you know white core regular jeans yeah. fading, but we have seen it it being it, it's used in the warp um, and weft. Yeah, yeah, it, it can be. Yeah, so it uh, can be. it's definitely. I think it's something that we'll likely put in the Mij line at some point, mm -hmm. just because of the price. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, we'll, we'll 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 get to it. Yeah, uh, we definitely need to have like an ecru, you know, earth toned mij option. That mm -hmm. might be fall winter twenty four. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it could be. Anyways, well, it has to be fall winter twenty four. Spring yeah, winter twenty four. Yeah. It's, it's just too, too late. late. So uh, maybe that fall winter twenty four. Yeah, yeah. That we can do is yeah. fall winter twenty four. Yeah. Um. Uh, Santiago writes, any chance for a jacket with a corduroy collar? I'd love to get one from you. I think at some point we will get to it. Uh, I do enjoy them. I think I got one back there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we are, well, we're doing the lined denim jackets yes. for the fall. Yeah. So that's a one step closer to that. Yeah. Like we're just kind of, back, you know, playing with, starting to play, play with the variation of the denim jacket. So. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to do a real Sherpa lined jacket at some point, like a denim jacket with real Sherpa lining. Anyways, <laughs> your, your eyes are like, Ooh. <laughs> it's going to be expensive, <laughs> but it's going to be very nice. So uh, anyways, just one of those things I'd love to do. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Pedro writes, Jojo collection still on track or delayed? Um Depending on uh, yeah. which information you're working with, yeah. but it is on the track in the way that yeah. it is being produced. Yeah. But uh, when are we gonna release it? I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, it is on the like this week. I was working a lot on. Well, I was writing all the product copy. We're getting all the blog posts ready. You know, product photography is done. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's done, yeah. and then there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been done. So. Yeah. It's on... Well, I think it's just the um, 
being made. Yeah. I think being sewn. Yeah, I, I, I just so have to make sure hard. they have it on the right end of the production <laughs> schedule. Yeah. Um, anyhow, I got to talk to Brandon about that. Um, great shirts today, both of you. My wife missed out on her size in the one Risa has on. Bayzad, what season was oh. yours from? This is from this season. Yeah. Yeah. Is this one released. out yet? I, I know that too. Oh, yeah. I think this one yeah. and the orange one released and the blue one didn't or something like that. Yeah, let's double, I don't know what's going let's on there. double check here uh, over at tatinyoko.com. Uh, your source for all things naked and famous denim. So let's go just, over to... Just as a like a tip, like if, if you missed out, I don't know what size... Um, your wife is uh this but... one is in coming soon still so oh, it has yeah. not come out yet so um, weird weird this we one is out and this it. one not... yeah um the aloha shirts like um oh, women's look. aloha shirt and men's it's me wearing basically the same outfit yeah i'm yeah pretty cool um yeah so and then uh, sorry to just kind of i yeah. started talking about this so i should finish the uh, men's Aloha shirt this season, starting this season, is coming in a little bit bigger, it's but it's fit. a little bit like more boxy um, fit. So if you want to like maybe find like the smaller size of men's, that might work. Yeah, maybe similar to women's. Uh, well. Yeah, I can just show you, and hopefully I can show it easily. Uh, Aloha shirt. If I find an older one um we might have a yeah you can see the fit comparison like it's these were quite short and versus the new models like you can see it's a different model but you can see how it goes past you know the uh the pop like basically the front pockets on the front whereas this one would pretty much go to the top of the pocket maybe even to the waist uh so these were a little bit more like you know they were they were definitely a smaller fit all around uh and this is this would be a medium because we would we pretty much always shoot everything on medium uh for our models and you can see here how much longer and even wider it is so uh a big difference in terms of fit i think it fits a lot better uh for more people obviously if you were like very slender and small then the old fit might have might have worked a little bit better for you but uh, even with the newer fit, if you want to go down a size, you can uh, you can get it to be a little bit more fitted in that respect. So, um, but I yeah. think because this fabric is just so like light mm. and like you know uh, drapey, it's hundred yeah. percent cotton, but it's very soft and drapey. So like even if it's oversized, I think it, the, the look kind of still looks uh, good. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we have the. Oh, light. we do have all the. Sizes. We do have all the sizes, so extra small, small, medium, large, and we also have it in this like navy with a little bit of green in it as well. Um, really, really fantastic fabric, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So check it Very out. Nice. Uh, get these while you can, and the price is really good on that. Really good on that. Much less expensive than the men's. The, I think the yield. The also. yield. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more fabric here. Yeah. Um, also, I have to get a very good shot of this fabric. Um, but this isn't a print. This is all woven into the fabric. Um, I, I'm going to bust out the, the macro lens this weekend and take some closer shots of this. But this is really, really a beautiful fabric. And... Mm. I'm fairly convinced that that is also the wrong price. Uh, sounds like it. Yeah. But but it is a great fabric. And just a pro tip, if anything, wow, that has that's the... that's a great price. <laughs> that might be a little too That's also... This is the, but, this is the steal. Yeah. Because the amount of fabric that goes into this one... You yeah. were wearing this one in a video not too long ago. Yeah. And you got a lot of compliments on it. Um, it is a handsome yeah. Um, fabric. It, it, yeah, just a pro tip. If anything has Dobby, like word Dobby in the title, that tend to mean that the patterns on that fabric is mm -hmm. woven in instead of print. Yeah. And it, it does, it actually makes the fabric look more expensive. Yeah. It, it, I think it is more expensive to, you know, do it because it's not just print where you can, you can yeah. change it all the time. Except I'm but, convinced that this is the wrong price. There's, there's no question. Anyways, whatever. Brandon... 
if you made an oopsie doopsie, it's we're your, sticking to it. Yeah, we're sticking to it, and you get to take advantage of it. So, um, yeah, some really really great options here in the spring summer shirts. These are so comfortable, mm -hmm. and uh, these fabrics are really really beautiful. Uh, and yeah, these are just they're classic pieces. You can you can wear you can wear these forever. So yeah, uh, there right. you have it. Um, yes. I'm sorry, but I do have to run out for yeah. Uh, Risa has responsibility. a yeah a uh, a building meeting that she she's has to be taken uh, uh she has to be a part yeah. of. Um, right. so, so anyways, I will excuse myself. Thank you for joining us on the hundredth episode of live stream and uh, enjoy solo live stream solo Bayzad for a little that's while. That's how it started. Yeah, that's true. That's how it started. So back to the the OG way. Maybe I should have a, a phone in my face. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, uh, Cathedral Ring writes Wonder Looper with Texas Long Staple. So Wonder Looper is a brand that Risa and I uh, created of uh, fine knitwear. You can you can also find it on tateandyoko.com. Um, we we are we are working on a Texas based uh, cotton T-shirt. So st stay tuned. It's it's uh, it'll. If you watch actually the the last um, Wonder Looper live stream on we have a we have a separate account on YouTube uh, we did talk about it so you you definitely want to check it out there. Um, Everyone saying bye bye Teresa. Bye, Teresa. She'll you'll you'll see her on the way out. But uh, but yeah. Um, any plans for an indigo indigo warp weft? Um, the Grand Blue King of Slub is one of my Grail fabrics. Uh, that's from Jordan. Uh, your lawn less. Um, any plans for an indigo indigo warp weft? Not at the moment, but um, we, we've done them before. We have an indigo indigo stretch selvage that's in stock, um, but uh, I'm sure we'll do something like that at some point again. I tend to actually, you know, as far as indigo indigo goes, I really prefer indigo black. Um, I like that tone, um, and I find that they're very similar but the blackness from the weft really makes the warp pop as the front face of that fabric fades away so you might see more indigo black options from us than indigo indigo i'm not opposed to indigo indigo but i really prefer the way that indigo black looks indigo indigo sometimes looks a little purpley um which unless you're a really Unless you're really a diehard fan of indigo indigo, like you get it, you really like that color. But indigo black, I think it retains more of that blueness and uh, it makes it approachable for more people. Um, but at the same time, I think that those who like indigo indigo also would like indigo black just as much. Um, uh, uh, Kirk Oldford writes, Naked and famous models seem like they are uh, probably nicer in real life than those other jean companies' models. Um, if you're talking about products, um, I'm, I'm glad uh, to hear that. I, I mean, I think it's hard to really capture fabric in photo form. I mean, there's there's a lot of detail that goes into what we make. And, you know, that's why I, I, I try to get as many beautiful, like, up and close detail shots as we can. Uh, but, you know, for many, this is a black denim. But when you really get into it and you look at it up close, you can, you understand what goes into making these. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, even though we do, we do try our best to capture what it is that we're making in photo form, that when you get them, that you are, you know, your expectations have exceeded that of what our photos could, could show. So, um, yeah. Um, any plans for a naked, uh, sorry, an MIJ chore coat? Um, no plans at the moment. I'm not opposed to it. Um, it'll, let's just release the heritage denim jacket first and see how things go from there. But I, I can see that, uh, coming down the line. Um, Johnny, uh, uh, Johnny J, I, I'm gonna, I don't want to butcher your last name. Uh, more True Guy fits coming for Fall Winter 2023. Yes, there will be many, many more True Guy fits coming for Fall Winter 2023. I might have spoken too early and said that everything for Fall Winter 2023 will be available in True Guy. That may not be the case. Uh, I'm actually working on it right now. Uh, but 
at, at the very least for spring summer 24 absolutely everything will be available in the true guy fit um okay um white lightning writes is there going to be new card case options i don't know probably but i don't have anything um i don't have anything planned at the moment for that uh brandon actually does a lot of the uh he pretty much handles all the leather craft stuff so i'll i'll talk to him and see if uh, he's got anything in the works um for that um uh bd writes reset leaving means the rest of the stream is all beans is all beans i don't know what that means spilling the beans oh spilling the beans i does Risa hold me back <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe um it means no one can stop him if we get him roped into a rant that's true you can try to rope me into a rant and uh we'll see where it goes Okay, um, uh, Nico writes, I need a restock on the MIJ-10 Easy Guy. The MIJ-10s are going to be restocked this fall. So all fits, all existing fits, the super weird easy and denim jacket. And then we're going to introduce the heritage denim jacket and the true guy option. So there's going to be a lot of options there in, uh, in the uh, MIJ-12, MIJ-10. Sorry, MIJ-10. Uh, somebody over here, Dylan, writes, when is the MIJ-12 dropping? MIJ-12 dropping is going to drop in the fall. I don't have an ETA exactly yet, but it will be uh, it will be uh, in the fall. Uh, I'm, I'm really speed speed running these, uh, these questions today. Invis Ian's, okay, Halloween release is going to be a surprise. This is the only surprise I've ever held from you guys in my entire career. Uh, and I think I'm going to hold it a little bit longer until uh, until we get to it. Um, um, this is the only... Okay, only once in the entire chat has anyone ever mentioned this character, this franchise. And... Nobody else has ever got it. And I, I didn't acknowledge it. And Chris Griffin, our archivist, don't, don't. You're just, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to find it. Don't do it. Um, but it's a good one. It's, the denim is fantastic. The artwork that we got for it is fantastic. You're going to love it. It's very naked and famous denim. And uh, just, just let it play out. Just let it play out. Um... So there you have it. Junior writes, Predator? It's not the Predator. Although I would really like to do, uh, I would like to do Alien. And then I suppose if we did Alien one day, we'd have to do Predator. That would be really cool. That'd be really cool. Um, I uh, The Toaster Pilot writes, Hellraiser or Aliens, please. I really would like to do Aliens. That's 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 my, it, it's on my to get list. And yeah, if we get Aliens, I would love to do Predator. Terminator 2 would also be really cool. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's, there's a few out there still that I, I, I'm, I'm chasing for. Um, but I, I, I can confirm, uh, Halloween is going to be a thing. Um, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm already working, man, I really just spill all the beans, don't I? Um, I'm working on the development of that fabric right now. I'm just I'm just conceptualizing it all, and uh, that one is going to be great. So that that's going to be a fall twenty four, Halloween twenty four option. But yeah, uh, Leatherface line with denim apron. Leatherface would be great as well. I'd love to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre, BD Robocop, absolutely. Uh, I would love to do RoboCop. Man, you got, I'm just, uh, I got to write these down. Um, I'm going to write down these things right now uh, because I'm going to forget. Another face, RoboCop, Alien vs. Predator. Got it. 
Um, okay. Uh, Johnny J writes, is it difficult to get collabs like that? Um, I think because we've done them and we're an established brand, it's a little bit easier for us to approach these things now. Um, in the very beginning, um, it was a little bit difficult, but I think it's like anything. Once they see that you've done it and that you've had success with it or they've come across it somewhere somehow, they're a lot more open to these kinds of things. Like we, we're at the point where we get approached. You know, at the very beginning, it was us doing the approaching. Um, but now it's a it's definitely a mix of both. But, you know, we, we get approached all the time now, which I think is pretty neat. And, uh, you know, it shows that these types of projects that we do are, are resonating. And, uh, you know, I certainly think our audience likes them a lot as well. You know, I'm a big movie guy. Everybody knows that I'm a big horror guy. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy doing these kinds of projects and, uh, you know, melding my, 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 the more I can meld my passions together, um, the better. So, yeah. Um, uh, Dylan, don't forget Terminator 2. That'd be sick. Thank you. See? I forget things too quickly. Wrote it down. Um, uh, uh, Cathedral Ring. The licensing has to be tough on the margins. Um, it's not terrible. Uh, I can say I can I can tell you now it's it's not it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and sometimes with these collabs, what we'll do just to you know make sure that the price point is you know within the naked and famous denim realm of price points is that uh, they're not available for wholesale uh, and that we only have them available direct through Naked Famous Denim uh, NYC and Tate and Yoko. So uh, that way we can have these products out there at the price point that you can expect. And, you know, that's how we can mitigate some of that stuff. Because there is there is a lot more detail and cost that goes into making the collaboration items. So those are just some things that we have to consider. So uh, I'm seeing that my stream is starting to get a little bit slow, but we're going to keep it going here. And then, you know, hopefully it'll pick up in the uh, in the replay. So uh, I apologize if uh, the stream quality is starting to, to degrade, um, but uh, it seems like that's just the way of life over here. With uh, with my internet connection, we had a pretty good we had it pretty good for a while, but uh, it just is what it is. Um, okay, uh, so anyways, we'll, we'll we'll be fine. I think we're we're not we're not we're not totally dead, but we'll we'll be fine here. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little refresh on this screen over here, and hopefully everything will be okay. Um, I apologize if uh, if. Uh, the quality is not great. Um, I'm just reloading here. Let's see what kind of questions that we might have. Uh, wait a second. I think Reese is messaging me, and I got to check on that. Um, okay. Uh, no problem. Okay. Um, uh, could you show off some of the items on the rack? Austin asks. Um, I could. I showed off some of it, and I will get to showing off some of it even more because I've got the Kiko denim there, and we're going to be talking about the Kiko denim today uh, before the stream ends. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Leonardo writes, Risa left and took the Wi-Fi with her. Ugh, it seems like that, eh? Uh, Envy, any word on the tote bags? Um, no word on that. I have to double check with Brandon because I know he was uh, taking charge of that project. Um, so hopefully uh, I'll have an update for you on that one soon. Um, uh, BD writes, have you hit the, the topics? Uh, have you hit the topics you marked down before the stream? I have a little bit. So I did with the books. Um, uh, but uh, I have another topic that I wanted to talk about. Um, I suppose, uh, yeah, these two topics may 
may be a little bit better for a back and forth conversation with Risa because I think her insights would have been uh, very good. So maybe I'm going to save some of these topics for the next stream. And that one topic that I think is kind of a, a good one to talk about, especially back and forth, is the role of salvage denim. Uh, and we could talk about, you know, the significance of salvage um, and why it appeals to denim enthusiasts. Um, I could maybe talk about a little bit that yeah, I think it's a better back and forth conversation actually uh, with Risa involved. So maybe we'll save that one for next time. But if you do have any topics that you'd like me and Risa to cover, let us know and I will uh, I will write them down and make sure that we do cover them. And with BD as the special producer, he will definitely remind me to make those uh, to make those comments uh, to make those questions answered. My brain is slowing down. Uh, probably because there's so much buffering going on in this live stream. I appreciate everybody who's hanging on despite the quality. Uh, I know uh, we've been having some trouble as of late, um, but uh, I really hope we can uh, we can hang on here. I really hate when this happens. Sorry, I did actually buy a new router the other day um, to see if I can make this not happen anymore, but it seems like my internet connection just stinks just stinks, especially around this time of day. People are waking up, starting to use the internet, and it just screws me over. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Um, okay, so I want to talk about the next release that's coming out. Uh, n it's not, not this upcoming Friday, but the Friday after on Jan January, June the 9th, we've got the Kiko Denim coming out. So. This one, you may have seen it. You, if you've watched the Spring Summer 23 preview video, then you know about this one already. This is the Kiko denim. It's not really a denim at all, but like a, a, a Sashiko style fabric with this beautiful kind of uh, diamond weave pattern in the fabric. This is a Dobby fabric that uh, has just a beautiful amount of indigo in it. And you can see how it's just from the rinse washing that we give it, you can see how much character it develops and it will continue to fade more and more over time. This will be a fabric that bleeds quite a lot. And now we do have this in a, a bunch of, of different options. You can see here, we have it in the jeans. This will be available in Super Weird and Easy Guy, but uh, we also will have it available in a denim jacket and a chore coat as well as some shorts. So we actually really, um, are offering this in, in quite a lot of fabric. So if you don't have something like this in your collection, I think it's something nice to own, um, especially if you want the jacket. So the jeans are one thing. This may not be an everyday, everyday jean for everybody. Um, I think it makes a nice special jean. It's certainly something that's gonna be noticeable uh, if you wanna have something that's, that, that's special. But the jackets are a lot easier, like on a day-to-day -day wear type of thing. Um, let me just uh, throw it on for you and you guys can see for yourselves. So we've got the denim jacket and yeah, just the, the beautiful indigo tone here, even from far is quite noticeable and it will continue to fade and fade. And uh, the fact that it is rinse wash makes the fact, makes this jacket a lot more comfortable to wear right from the beginning. So keep that one in mind. It's not a particularly rigid jacket at all. There's there's really no rigidness to it. And uh, it just feels great. It looks great. And, you know, it provides enough contrast with, from your, you know, your raw denim jeans that uh, it makes it a lot easier to wear. Um, you can wear this in the spring, summer, fall. This is a great all year option. Um, the fabric really is quite nice. I think it's picking up nicely on the camera here which we're lucky. And then of course, when we, uh, when we release these, when we put the video out, we'll have uh, a lot more detailed photos and you can really see uh, just how intricate that weave pattern is. And uh, we also have it in the chore coat. And uh, if you know me, I've been living in my Blue Jay Selvage chore coat a lot this season. I uh, I haven't, the reason why I didn't take this jacket uh, is because I have an older Sashiko denim jacket. It's very similar, but uh, if you don't have something like this in the closet, it, it may be 
which is a really nice option for you to have. Uh, so I, I would highly recommend this one. I think I think the chore coat is going to go pretty quickly uh, for this one. And earlier, somebody was mentioning shorts. These will also come in a shorts option. So a very, very easy to wear pair uh, for the summer season here. So a lot of fabric, a lot of fit options here in the Kiko denim. So uh, watch out for that. It's going to be coming out on June the 9th. I think some of our retailers might have some of the jeans and stuff already, but uh, June 9th on Tate and Yoko and Naked and Famous Denim NYC. Um, the Toaster Pilot writes, B, uh, da, 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 da. oh wait, wait, Spencer's Mustache writes, did New York City Selvage get restocked? The website shows sold out, but I don't know if that's because it's only available uh, in real life. Yes, the New York City store has restocked the Empire State Salvage. If you head over to uh, nakedandfamousdenimnyc.com, let's just uh, go over to the browser window here, um, you'll see the uh, Empire State Salvage. It says preview the collection. So this will show you everything that's available uh, as far as fits are concerned, if uh, my internet would load the website. Um, and uh, it says sold out on everything because they're not available to purchase online. So even though it says sold out, it, that doesn't mean that they're not in stock in store. If you want to see if your size is in stock before you go down to the shop, give the shop a call. They'll let you know. Uh, at this point, pretty much everything's in stock except the strong guy. Um, I only have a few size like 36 and 38s in stock I'm, I'm working on a, a replenishment of these so if you're if you're if you want the strong guy those may not be available in your size but uh everything else at this point should be in stock so uh if you're if you're if you're curious about what is in stock what isn't in stock give the store a call they'll be happy to help you out ask for ask for shane or ask for steve they'll be they'll be happy to help you um Mike Lennon writes, should I buy the blue comfort denim? Yes or yes? Well, if those are your only two options, then obviously yes is the right choice. The blue comfort is a very, very comfortable fabric and it feels like jeans. You know, sometimes the problem with a high stretch denim is that it doesn't really feel like denim. It just, you know, it's very, very, very stretchy. And while these are very stretchy, they do have the heft and the weight and the like the grittiness of raw denim. So I think it's a great balance uh, for raw denim enthusiasts and lovers and people who want and need the stretch for comfort. So uh, you definitely want to give that one a shot. A shot. Okay, 